Hello and welcome to the North American Guitar Showroom in London. I'm Ben and it is a very special talking guitar today. We've got Mr. Tom Sands sat next to me on the sofa. Tom, how are you, mate? I'm um, excellent. Fantastic. This is going to be a chat about all things Sands, the world of Tom Sands. Yeah. So, tell us, because we were, we were talking earlier, we went to have a quick pub lunch. Yeah. So, just for our viewers, just tell us how you got started. Like, what, what was your, the thing that got you into becoming a luthier? Um, yeah, very kind of convoluted path. Um, I've made things since, as long as I can remember. Uh, my grandfather uh, was probably the most practical man you'll ever meet. He was, uh, you know, the kind of guy that could fix anything with a piece of string, you know. <laughs> Um, and so from a very young age, we were always, you know, doing things together, getting our hands dirty. And he encouraged me from, from a young age to, to pick up tools and, and make things out of wood. Um, and so by the time I was about 17 or 18, I'd kind of amassed a modest tool collection uh, and a small workshop in my dad's garage. Mm -hmm. And my best friend at the time, uh, a phenomenal guitar player, and he wanted to build uh, an electric bass um, in, the, in the kind of vein of Jens Ritter, yeah. actually, um, for, for his school uh, design technology project. And he said to me, Tom, this is what I want to do. How about we cut a deal? I'll teach you how to play the bass and you can help me with this, this project. So that means you can now do demos for us. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see about that. Um, and so, sure enough, we, we went to our local music store. We picked up a, a, a secondhand bass and we took it home, stripped all the parts off it. Went to our local wood yard, uh, picked out some, or well, what we thought was walnut. Uh, it turned out to be Paduke when we flamed into it and it turned bright orange. <laughs> but you know, over the course of the next couple of months, we, we kind of, uh, we made this electric bass and, and it worked and, and it, was, uh, it was a thing of, I won't say great beauty, but it was a, it was a thing. Um, and you know, finished school, went off to art school, mm -hmm. studied product design and kind of followed the kind of design and maker path. Mm -hmm. um, came out of university, uh, got an apprenticeship as a cabinet maker mm -hmm. and, you know, did that quite happily for about six years until I kind of woke up one day and I was just like, you know what, I'm not enjoying this anymore. And, you know, something that used to be my passion and kind of all I used to think about and all, all I wanted to do, it just kind of slowly turned into my day job, yeah. you know, my, my nine to five. And I realized that I was no longer being creative and, and that kind of side of my personality wasn't being satisfied. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I needed to kind of rediscover that. Um, and so I started writing to makers and designers and artists kind of all over the world, you know, looking for a, a renewed source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. And one of these people that I contacted happened to be a guy called Urban Samoji. Yeah. You might have heard of him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But it, uh, so you're saying that it was the connection because that's something that I know that we've spoken about at length, is that that you the thing that you love the most about being a guitar builder is that connection that you have with your customer and the kind of bond that you create with them. Sure. Um, so yeah, I guess you know when I when I was cabinet making, it was you know I'd, I'd kind of go to work in the morning and a stack of drawings would appear on my bench and I'd work through them and make these beautiful beautiful pieces, you know for for kind of clients all over the world. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I felt this real disconnect between the making and, and you know, the final client. Um, sometimes I just wouldn't even interact with them at all. Uh, so I felt very, very disconnected. Um, and so that's what I wanted. I wanted to rediscover my kind of creativity and I wanted to be building for a person, you know, that I would get to know and, and you know, building something for someone. Mm -hmm. You know that relationship is really really special and really really important um and so that's what kind of took you back into back it. to the kind of guitars so um, you so you, you you wrote to Irvin and he obviously said come on over yeah. that's me yeah um what was that what was that like working with such, such a legend but i mean that must be quite an intense process getting the apprenticeship moving a whole life from the uk to the US, yeah, uh, it was it was weird. It all happened so quickly, and it, it just 
you know, I just followed the yarn as it untangled, really. Yeah. You know, um, he invited me out for an interview, and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm doing that. And you know, went out there, um, spent two weeks, you know, living, eating, breathing guitar, sleeping on the workshop floor, um, doing the famous skills tests. You know, making the mahogany cube and doing all the purfling mitres and having to go at carving a samodji headstock and all this kind of thing. Um, and it was just very inspiring and, and mm-hmm. intense and you know working with Leo Buendia and yeah. Julian Gaffney and Chris Morimoto and it was just like yeah um, is it is the, the just the you think of the names that have come out Jason absolutely like saying Leo I mean just Mitchie just mm-hmm. it goes on and on mm-hmm. and on so you, you must be very proud to have experienced that and to to be carrying on it's 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 an honour, you know, mm. to be a small, a very small part of a great man's mm. legacy is is just so humbling and, and and rewarding, and I feel so grateful for that opportunity. You know, I, I remember I'd be in in the basement in urban shop, stood at my bench, and you know, looking at all the scuffs and marks and dings and glue spots and scratches on the desk, and just thinking. Well, maybe Jason did that and maybe that was Leo and was that Ray and you know all these I just the history you know yeah. was was quite overwhelming but you know an amazing amazing experience and so so when you um, I guess you, you finish your apprenticeship but that, that that must be I remember we met each other at NAN yeah. and you were just finishing and you were just about to set up shop um, in the UK and that that must have been quite a nervous it's a huge step to st- finish an apprenticeship and then to go and set up your own company and, and start your own brand. So yeah. how did you, how did you for, for other luthiers that are about to get to this stage, you know, how did you kind of overcome that and any fears or anything like that that you had to go through to, was it just dive in? You just dived in? It was, yeah, just kind of one foot in front of the other and just keep keep going and just yeah. hoping that it's all gonna work out, you yeah. know? Um, you know, I spent two years with Irvin and every day was just, you know, my brain was like a sponge. Yeah. You know, constantly just like absorbing all this information. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it was it was kind of difficult to, to think too far ahead. Yeah. Um, but I remember, you know, in the kind of weeks leading up to the end of my apprenticeship, starting to get very, very nervous and mm. very anxious and because it's a, it's a massive thing. Mm. You know, you, you've just moved out. To California, you've, you've kind of pressed restart on your life. You've, you've kind of gone to find yourself and follow your passion, mm. um, and then before you know it, it's finished, it's done. Yeah, and it's like you know the visa expires. Yeah, and you've got like you've got to be out of the country by a certain date, um, and then you've got to start the next chapter. Um, the, the the beautiful thing for your career, and it really has been like a bit of a rocket ship, hasn't it? Because before you'd even set up shop, you already had a waiting list because you have a it, it, we, we, was, we were talking earlier on how this sort of spark happened in the UK amongst a lot of the fingerstyle community, and it was one guy, yeah. Mr. Adam Gray, yeah. got his guitar and, and he showed it to everybody. And then it was, I want one of those, I want one of those, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And suddenly, if we'd even opened the doors, you had like a two year waiting list. Yeah, I mean, that is. That is truly phenomenal. I still have to kind of pinch myself, you know, when I look at my order board, I'm like, wow, that's... And people buy more than one. Sure. That's, that's yeah. the thing. You know, that's the most incredible thing. And, you know, we talk a lot about rela- the relationship. Mm. And I, it means so much to me that I'm able to, to have that interaction mm. with somebody. Um, and, yeah, you know, that, that first commission really took me by surprise. Um, <laughs> you know, Adam... You know, who's become a very good friend of mine, a very dear friend. Um, you know, he he found me through the internet. I'm not still not sure how how he found out, but obviously, you know, I was associated with a Samoji brand, and mm. um, you know, he figured that I was probably he was probably onto a reasonably sure thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was it was amazing. He he kind of called me up. I think I was like two months into my apprenticeship, and he said, you know, it was this very cryptic email. It, it would just it just said the subject was, are you building yet? And I was like, what, what is this? And <laughs> so I emailed back and I was like, well, yeah, no, I'm doing this Samoji thing. And, and uh, you know, he, he just placed an order there and then, you know, wow, and just said, yeah, he just said, you know, this is what I'm looking for. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it with you. And, um, you know, we had vague discussions about what we'd build it out of, but he was very much kind of just left it over to me. And, and um, you know, I built that, that first guitar from him, for him. Um, he subsequently ordered another and then another. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. And, you know, he, he showed a few friends and, like, yeah, it was amazing. I just love that. I think that's that's kind of... You know, that's the dream, really, isn't it? That's it's inspiring to have somebody believe in you so early on in your career and invite you know other guitar players and yeah. you know enthusiasts into your into your brand. Yeah. Um, and talking of your brand, I mean, it's so fast forward. You know, you set up. We're a year later. The thing from our side is is your yeah. You're the first. You're, you are the only British luthier in the North American guitar. Um, and we've been talking for, uh, what, three years yeah, or something like that? Time, yeah. um, so we were so proud to, to announce you on our books. Um, but, it, you know, from our side, we just think it's, it's just so in refreshing in seeing how you approach um, your building, but also the marketing of your, your brand. And you obviously have the funny side of things, which is the week this week, which one that I hope to appear in. Um, <laughs> but, of course, you know, you've got a lovely team um, and... Um, I was going to say Rosie, but it's Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. I keep getting that wrong. Um, who's your sort of content manager? Would you Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you just—it's like an insight into your workshop and the your the stuff that you put out is so beautifully done that, like I was saying to you, I can be on Instagram or Facebook, and before I've even seen the whole picture, I know immediately that, that is a Tom Sands insight into mm-hmm. your workshop, which is it's incredible for you know, attracting obviously clients to you, but also you're, you're kind of opening, opening up and showing people how you do things. And yeah. like you said early on about cabinet mate- making, um, you weren't able to show your personality or, or you know, your creativity, but you, your personality comes through, A, your instruments, but obviously now you're showing the world what it's like inside. It really does mm-hmm. come through the marketing and that, you, that you're doing. I think it's it's a very deliberate decision. Um, you know, we we have a, we have this kind of rule in the workshop that nothing that leaves the shop, uh, everything that leaves the shop has to be beautiful. Just just everything, whether it's an email, whether it's a, you know a photograph on Instagram, you know, the guitars. It's a very holistic thing, and you know, I think also. Luthery can be quite a solitary mm. thing, you know, it's invariably a, a kind of one person operation. And, you know, social media is a, an amazing way to, to network and to kind of talk to the people who, who are interested, you know, directly and, and mm. kind of, I think that sharing what you do is, is, is a great way to grow as a craftsperson and as, as a builder. Um, you know, because otherwise you're just working in a vacuum, yeah, and and you just become very insular, and, and I think you're it an stifles. Artist. You're an artist, don't sure. you? Sure, it's it's incredibly, you know, when you're you're putting your art out there, and it's a it's a very low. What you're doing is quite a lonely mm-hmm. craft, and and, you're, and you're, it's nerve wracking when you hand the guitar over and you hope that everything's perfect and the yeah. client's happy. Um, just talking about the guitars, so we noticed obviously because of your. Instagram feed. Right. <laughs> uh, obviously, you've, you've moved from doing, um, going from single builds to doing, this is your first batch of guitars you're doing in, in one go. So how's, what, how's that transition been? Batch uh, building. <sighs> Challenging? Uh, yeah, to say the least. Um, again, you know, it was a very a deliberate decision. Um, you know, I really wanted to examine every aspect of my building under the microscope Mm -hmm. and really try to um, up my efficiency and up my productivity Um, and I figured that you know batch production was was the way to do that at least for now Mm -hmm. um, to kind of really get a sense of what processes are taking too long what how many steps can I kind of remove or reduce while still maintaining quality and producing a great product Uh, and you know, if you're bracing six tops in a row, you know you very quickly come to the realization that actually, you know, I shouldn't be using this type of glue, or maybe that brace can be glued in slightly smaller, or you know, 
is this bridge patch too big or you know whatever it might be you, you kind of you, you see these things much more quickly um, so you know I don't know if I will keep doing you know the batch production uh, I feel much more comfortable building say two at a time yeah. than six yeah. uh, you know the idea of carving six necks in a row is 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 not not super appealing so and yet you told me that carving next is actually one of the things you most enjoy it is uh, I, very labor I absolutely love carving next you know it's the most kind of, it's the primary interface with the instrument you yeah. know it's it's a very tactile process but it's it requires a lot of attention mm. um, you know you are carving with rasp you're shaping with files and sandpaper and you know by the time you finish a neck your fingers are shot and yeah. all your fingertips have been rubbed off and it's you know you're constantly kind of touching and feeling for lumps and bumps and it, yeah it requires a lot of patience mm -hmm. and, and effort and physical effort so yeah one or two at a time thanks <laughs> and what, what was voicing six what's voicing six tops like <laughs> yeah uh, again I, think we, I know that we spoke about this earlier but you know I, I was liking it to when you've Produce the record, or you and you you've, you're in that mix stage, and you're listening, and you, your ears just go so muddy. It must it must have a similarity to that. You need fresh ears on each top, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, each guitar is different. Um, you know, you're shooting for, you know, consistency. Of, of, consistency is obviously important, but you know, every client's needed needs are different, um, and every piece of wood is different. But you know, the, the process of voicing, the way that I do it, the way that Irvin taught me was you know top gets glued to the rim the rim is in the mold and you're shaping the braces kind of in this very confined space inside the rim inside the mold you know there's lots of picking it up and tapping putting it back down a little more with the chisel and picking it back up and tapping it and it's, it's it requires a lot of focus and a lot of concentration and lots of quiet time and um, yeah you, you do get to a point where it's like well is that bum a little bit different to this bum? And is this like, am I tapping? Is that sounding the same? Is that different? I can't. Yeah, it, yeah. you just lose um, perspective on it. So, and so do you have do you have a uh, a voicing in your head with each instrument prior to the actual voicing process? Do you, do you, do you, are you what you're looking for from a particular set of wood or what a client has said that they're looking for? Or? I mean, I was talking about this on on social media recently. Um, and it, it's, it's a weird one. You kind of get to a point, at least I, I do, uh, where it's like, okay, that's it. Yeah. That's right, you know. Um, when I was starting out, obviously, it was all about taking detailed notes and spectrum frequency analyzing and, and you know, graphs and charts and uh, tuning forks and all this kind of thing. But, you know, now um, I'm getting to this place where I'm relying on touch and just relying on my ears and just a sense of when something is just right and just how it's supposed to be. Mm. Um, so, yeah. so, and I mean, amazing. I mean, it's just, I mean, for us, I know I say this on, on pretty much most of the interviews we do, but it's so humbling for us as the dealer. Um, you know. <laughs> for you as a dealer, what about <laughs> No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> Without, without you, we, you know, we wouldn't exist. Yeah. Um, and listening and seeing you, your brand grow as we've seen with other brands that we represent um, grow. It's it's incredible. And you feel so part of a part of it. Um, but uh, yeah, hearing the, the tales of, of what you go through, it's it's, it's incredible. It really is. Um, so there's a big change, obviously, and and again, something else that I think is um, was very brave uh, was 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 you know moving to your own line so mm -hmm. you've got your own body shapes so why don't you just tell us a little bit more uh, about the, the body shapes and, and obviously you've gone from the double O's and the is it the M the modified modified dreadnought <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, so you've, you've, you've changed your line yeah. so just tell us a little bit more about that um, or should I say you started your line yes <laughs> yeah um, yeah so when I was when I was working with Irvin um you know, I was very keen to, you know, go down the path well trodden, you know, to kind of stick very closely to Irvin's templates and, yes. and it, literally to his molds, you know, I was using his shapes and, you know, really trying to understand how that worked. Um, 
and you know when, when I finished the apprenticeship I think I really wanted to try and set myself apart um, kind of quite deliberately I wanted to make a bit of a statement um, and you know because you think of all the top luthiers in the world you know a lot of them have come through Irvin's shop yeah. you know we've mentioned you know Leo, Michi, Jason, Ray, Julian um, and so for Mitch just phenomenal just builders, like you know, you know yeah. and it's like okay well, how, <laughs> how do I you know like now okay now it's Tom Sam's like okay well how do I where's my niche within the niche within the niche mm -hmm. um, and you know so I, I came to all this from you know a kind of designy kind of background um, and so, you know, I'm very influenced by automotive design and architecture and kind of contemporary product design. And so I just kind of set about shaping the guitar in, 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 in my kind of, um, to, to kind of uh, speak of my um, design sensibilities. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, I have three models now. I have the Model S, which replaces the Samoji style double O. Yep. Uh, it's slightly smaller, it's got a shorter scale length. Yep. Um, I have my Model M, yep. uh, which replaces the OM. Yep. And the Model L, which is my kind of homage to the Samoji MD. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the idea was to design three guitars that were very different from each other and designed to do a very specific thing. Um, I was finding that when I was building in Irvin's shop and using his templates that there was kind of a lot of blurred lines. You know, the OM was very, actually very similar to the double O and, and the kind of tones that I was getting were, were not different enough. Um, so yeah, it, it was a deliberate decision to, to, um, to separate the, the guitars and, and to make a bit of a statement. Um, which I, I'm kind of happy with. Yeah, you, well, you should going. be. <laughs> you should be. So obviously, a big part of um, of Aluthia's brand is being associated with artists, having having an artist. Um, sure. I've seen Jason we've got Michael Watts, yeah. um, and we're obviously great friends with Will McNichol. Will McNichol, yeah. Um, and uh, you, you tell, just tell us how you and Will met, um, and uh, yeah, how you kind of hit it off, really. Yeah. Uh, Again, apart from his dry sense of humour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Social media, uh, again, you know, Instagram kind of came up trumps for me. Uh, you know, I'd come back from California um, and I wanted to start to think about recording some of my instruments to get some demos um, up on the website, and I was kind of scouting about for for players. Uh, scrolling through my Instagram one day, and it pops this guy who's like, oh yeah, he's yeah, pretty handy <laughs> yeah um and so you know sent him a dm uh you know, that's a direct message direct message so <laughs> like the lingo uh, <laughs> I love, I love. so so no i uh, you know I, I sent him a message and uh you know asked him if he'd be interested in coming and and spending a day with me and and recording and uh will being will the, the kind of consummate professional he was like, yeah, absolutely. Came up, spent a very long, grueling day with me, um, recording six or seven instruments. And that was kind of the start of our friendship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he subsequently came to the Berlin show with me, yeah. uh, demoed my instruments. We had a lot of fun. He came out to Van Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, we had even more fun. Um, and then amazingly, one of the highlights uh, of this year um, the two guitars that I took to, to Vancouver to display, um, I then delivered to a client down in San Diego, California. And Will just did this like, breathtaking house concert yeah. uh, for my client, which was just just unbelievable. He's to, a breathtaking player. To, to, you know, to build these instruments and then to put them in the hands of somebody who really, really knows how to get the most out of them mm. um, is, is just incredible. Uh, yeah, for for me and for for many other luthiers who've been down that kind of road. Yeah, it's lovely and it's it's great. You can see the friendship. That's I think that's that's a really lovely thing from mm -hmm. outside looking in. You know, you can really see how you two are good friends and yeah. and you're building for him at the moment. What are you building for him? I am. Yeah, it, yeah. 
So I'm building uh, the Wilmot Nickel Signature Model S. Right now, <laughs> oh, great. Um, which we're both really, really excited about. You know, the, he... The, I sense you're holding back there. You're not, you're not letting too much out of the back. No, no, oh, no, okay, I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy to talk about it. So, so the, the, um, the first guitar of, of mine that Will's played was uh, a double O, so one of mm -hmm. these in, in Koa. Uh, and Carpathian in Spruce and, and Will kind of just fell in love with that and we decided that you know a small bodied guitar was something that he needed in his life yeah um, and so you know over the last year we've we've kind of been throwing ideas together and, and um, you know he's been to the workshop a few times and we've tapped on bits of wood and it's like Great. Oh, you know maybe, yeah let's go with that and so we're doing a, a Model S with a cutaway a 12th fret short scale uh, redwood top um, and black limber back oh, and sides so slightly unusual um, but it's uh, just tonal, tonal characteristics of black limber uh, I would say mahogany-ish okay um, it's got uh, an extraordinary kind of sub bass tap mm -hmm. tone um, he does love his boom he does love his yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've gone with the redwood top and I've just finished voicing that, just closed the box. Great. Uh, and yeah, it's sounding sounding pretty cool. Um, so I'm hoping to have that done for him in the springtime. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's recording, because he's doing an album with, with an orchestra, isn't he? String Quartet. String Quartet, yeah. Right. And he's, is he recording with this? Yes, he's gonna do a couple of tracks with this. Amazing. Uh, which I'm super excited about. So that's, I think that's happening at the end of the month uh, up in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take it up and go spend some time with him in the yeah. studio. and. You know, spend some time with them in the studio. You know? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's like, I'm, you know, I hear myself saying that, and I'm like, wow, that was brilliant. Wow. It's, um, it's quite funny. I used to talk about being the the, the, the professional. We um, there was only one time when I actually thought he might tell me to do one. Was it? He turned up to do. Obviously, we're fortunate enough to have some amazing session players, including Mr. Stuart Ryan, who obviously taught Will, yeah. and uh, Will, and we've had Robbie in here, we had some great, great players. And um, we had a batch of, I think it was 30 avian guitars. <laughs> and he turned out. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what are we doing today? And I was like, all of those. And he went, right. And he just, I mean, he plowed through these yeah. guitars. But the thing about Will is like, you, you could probably give him 60 guitars. Right. And he'd he just be like, yeah, no, I'll do it. <laughs> he um, loves the challenge. I'm right. do it. But I just don't think he's got it in him to <laughs> be like, like, no, no. I, can't, I can't, I can't. I think my hands would fall off. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, no, I will totally do that. <laughs> Okay, so and what, what, what's what's sort of next to you? What's your what's the what's the future? What are your what are your plans, as it were? You got the guitar for Will. You yeah. got a couple of orders from us. Yes. And uh, what's happening else? What else happening? Let's see. I said that like nineteen times. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, I you know right now I'm just feeling very excited to you know get the nose down and, and get building. Um, you know I've had a very busy eighteen months. You know, moving back, setting up the workshop, um, start restarting my life again, yeah. um, and kind of getting comfortable in the new space and building, and obviously now you know taking Daisy on. Um, so right now it's like okay, I've actually got to build some guitars. Um, so really, kind of just focusing on refining my process and, and my kind of aesthetic, um, and, and just spending some solid hours at the bench. Mm. You know, I've had a lot of time out at shows and. And recording and on all this kind of thing. So, so yeah, it's it's about actually doing some work and building. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say from all of us here that we can very much say that you do a lot of work. You're very very hard working, and it's it's an honour to represent you, Tom. Thank you so much for yeah. coming in today. It's um, my pleasure. You know, it's I've got to say it's having my instruments here and being on this couch and and it's. You know, when I, when I come in here and I see a, a Jens Ritter guitar on the wall, you know, <laughs> one of those guitars that I've kind of lusted after uh, and dreamt about since I was about 17. <laughs> you know, his, Jens's basses are kind of what started it all for me, really. Um, so to, to have my guitars here and, and, and in such amazing company is, is just so special for me. And I feel very grateful and, and humbled to be here. So thank you so much. So... We're now going to get a bass solo out of you. <laughs> um, for more information on Tom Sands guitars, then please do get in touch. And for more information on the finest hand-built luthier instruments, then please do subscribe to this channel. 
one more time, Tom. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Have a great day.